Hold on, Caro, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Tony! Tony, we are lost. Where is this? Caro, Caro, come, 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 come. come. You see, we are in Lugari Forest. Lugari Forest? Mm, yes, so the Shamba must be... There. Come on, come with me. No. Come on, come on. It's a dead end. Let's try here. Okay. Ah, uh -huh. another ah, dead end. I see a path there. Let's come on, come on. Ah, welcome to Shamba Shepherd. Today we're in the western county of Kakamega. Farmers Gilbert and Mary are passionate about education and training up their farm hand, Francis. Their shamba is nine acres and currently has two dairy cows, some rabbits, beans intercropped with maize, leafy vegetables, beehives, and some improved local chicken. My name is Dr. Mary Susan Anyenda. I've been farming around 23 years. For people who are salaried, three quarters of their salary, they use it to buy food. So for me, if I can produce my own food, I know I will not uh, go begging. Number two, I've used farming to educate myself for further studies up to a PhD level from farming. I've educated my children through farming. My name is Gilbert Okech. I actually enjoy doing farming and I never lack market because people eat food every day. So Francis is our manager on the farm, make sure that things go on smoothly. My name is Francis Ofula Wanjala. I'm 24 years old. Gilbert and Mera have been like my guardians. When I was back in college, they used to support me. So after my studies, I decided to come and practice what I've been learning in school. We must prepare the next generation. They'll pick up from us. Very nice to be here. Yes. Mary, happy to see you. Excellent, yes. excellent. So, Gilbert, how is the farming here? Any challenges? Feeding of the cattle, we try to feed, but we are seeing results. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I've planted several crops. Mm -hmm. They grow to a level and they are stunted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that the only challenge? No, they are feeds. Okay. So I try using ash. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. All right. Yes. Yeah. And we didn't come alone. Mm -hmm. We came yeah. with uh, experts. But yeah. before we start work, we always pitch our tent. That's okay. 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 All right. So All we'll right. see you we'll later. See you a bit. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank All right. you. I'm eager to learn and know more about new technologies in agriculture and explore the world. We have so many youth who have degrees, but they're all going to Nairobi to look for jobs. When we have farms here, so if he can be a lesson to others, learn from us, teach others what he has learned, then we can make our own money here in the rural areas instead of us going to Nairobi. Okay, so let's pitch the tent and help Mary and Gilbert to bring up more youth into agribusiness. Francis! Yes. Ah, I can see you're busy preparing feed for the cattle. Yes. How are they doing? There's one which is not coming on it. That's a very serious challenge. Yes. All right, just give me a few minutes, I'll be back. Okay. okay? Yes. All right. To help a cow get into the right condition to come on heat takes some work. Cyril Ochako from CKL Africa is the man to give Francis the advice he needs. I've been feeding nepe grass, mm. potato vines, uh -huh. and some salt. Yes. Only? Yes. Ah, Francis. Yes. You and you want to eat, how many things do you eat? Huh? A thousand things. A thousand things. Yes. Then are you giving your girl three things? They need to get a balanced diet. And you know, what goes in is what? Comes out. Comes what out. comes out? You want it to be on heat? Yes. This one specifically because it's one and a half years, but it has not shown signs of it. 
a good cow is supposed to come and eat as from 65 to 90 days after calving down. You see, you have waited for another one and a half years, which is a loss in the farm. Mm -hmm. First, we have to look at the environment. Where does the animal stay? Mm -hmm. When the place is comfortable, we expect something from the cow. Like now, if you see your drainage of the unit, somehow there's some urine that is stagnating around. Mm -hmm. And that one, it creates a lot of ammonia, which also can be able to affect the cow. The other thing is what you feed your animals. Mm -hmm. The napier, these two saccharins. That means you just cut it and prod it to the trough. It needs two or three days for it to wither. Then you can be able to do what? To feed your cow. Mm -hmm. Francis is feeding the cow freshly cut napier, which is not recommended because it has too much water in it. Napier that has been wilted for two to three days will have more dry matter than freshly cut napier. A cow needs to be fed dry matter that is 3% of her body weight every day. So, for example, a 300 kilogram cow should eat 9 kilograms of dry matter every day. But different types of fodder have different amounts of dry matter. For example, hay has 90% dry matter and napier has 20% dry matter. So, to get 9 kilograms, Francis should mix hay with his wilted napier grass. He should also give concentrates like dairy meal, protein supplements and mineral salts. The other thing, are you doing your routine management? Actually, we can see from the body. The body condition is, is not so good. You can be able to count and see more than three ribs. The skin is spilling out very easily. That one is telling us that the nutrition is not okay. The supplementation is not okay, even for the minerals. Remember, he has said that he has a problem with conception. Yes. And that is what we want to look at very keenly. Mm -hmm. Seeker Africa has given out Maclic Plus as a very special mineral supplement. The minerals have been adjusted and they have been balanced in a way that they can be able to regulate the balance of the hormones in the body. We give a free choice so that the animal can leak to a point that it is satisfied. The requirement of minerals in a body changes mm -hmm. with the time. I can advise him to give macric mineral brick, which is supposed to be around the unit all the time, mm -hmm. so that it can top up the balance of the deficit. The extra nutrients in the Maclic Plus supplement and the Maclic Brick will help the cow develop the hormones she needs to come on heat. So once the hormones are balanced, the animal will actually come on it if the nutrition is also done rightfully. As Carol said, we have to do a balanced diet and even the water. I'm happy I can see there is water here and that water must be of good temperatures, not so cold. If you do that, in the next one month, your cow must come on it. And we hope by the time we are coming back, all these spaces will be filled with cows. All right? Yes. Thank you very much, Wachako. Thank you, Carol. So, let's get started following Wachako's advice to create better conditions so the cow will come on heat. First, we need to clean up the cow shade. Wow, it's looking better already. Animals can tell you when they need feeding and water. Plants also do, using signs. There are clear signs that a crop doesn't have enough nutrients. Ignore the signs and you risk losing some of your crops to pests and diseases. We have asked Frederick Mbala from Safi Organics to help Francis find out how to improve the health of his soil. So maybe you start us off by telling us the importance of fertilization in a plant. Okay, fertilization is the addition of extra nutrients to the soil. Plants have used the nutrients in the soil, the nutrients have gotten depleted. The farmer needs to add nutrients into the soil. Is there any need to test the soil before applying the fertilizer? Before a farmer comes to source for a fertilizer, he has to test his soil first. A soil test should be done at least every two years. 
It will tell you what nutrients your soil has and what nutrients your soil needs for the crop you're planting. Plus, how much fertilizer you should use. Using fertilizer without knowing the amount the soil needs means you can end up with too much fertilizer which can harm the crops and the soil. What is the importance of good soil health? A good soil health is a soil that has got enough nutrients, the nutrients like the NPK that are essential for the plant growth. As well as giving the soil nutrients, adding organic matter such as compost or manure will improve the soil's structure, allowing movement of air and water and better root growth, as well as providing a good environment for microorganisms to grow. What is the NPK? NPK is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Those are the key nutrients that are needed by the plants. Nitrogen is essential for the plant growth, especially for the vegetative growth of the plant. Phosphorus helps the plants for the root development. Potassium for the growth of the old plant. Tell us signs of a plant that is missing the three main ingredients that you've mentioned, N, P, K. The potassium and phosphorus are for root development. If you observe that your plant are stunted, they are dwarf, eh? they are not growing, then your plant is lacking phosphorus and potassium. Plants need phosphorus and potassium to develop healthy roots, which can absorb nutrients from the soil. Making sure your soil has enough phosphorus and potassium will help your crops produce a better yield. Plant lacks nitrogens, the leaves tend to turn yellow. A plant with enough nitrogen will have healthy green leaves that can absorb sunlight and uses its energy to produce fruit. What are the basic principles that a farmer should know? The four R principles for a farmer is the right source of fertilizer, the right time to apply the fertilizer, the right rate to apply, and the right place to place the fertilizer. The first of the four R's is the right source. Why is the source important? The source is important because you have to see the composition of the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And also if your fertilizer is certified. The second of the four R's is the right time. So which are the best times for a farmer to use fertilizer and how? During planting, you plant with the fertilizer and then during top dressing, depending on the variety, other plants take like 45 days, then you top dress. Fertilizer needs to be applied during planting to help the crop to germinate well. A top dressing fertilizer is applied after planting at different times according to the type of crop. Now, the third R, the right rate. Francis, yes. when you're applying fertilizer, how much do you use? Just apply. Just get fertilizer and just... Yes. Francis needs to use the right amount of fertilizer. Using too little will reduce his yield. Using too much will cost him more money, which is bad for business. And now for the final R, the right place. Where should the fertilizer be placed on a plant? It depends which fertilizer it is. Organic fertilizer doesn't have a burning effect, doesn't have a scorching effect than the synthetic fertilizer, then it will burn your plants. When planting, inorganic fertilizer must be first mixed with compost or manure. Then add some topsoil and place the seed on top. If you're using organic fertilizer, the seed can go straight on top. Francis's leafy vegetable crop needs top dressing. He's using organic fertilizer which can be placed directly on the plant. If you're using inorganic fertilizer, it must be placed 10 to 15 centimeters away so that it does not burn the crop. Coming up after the break. Getting beans ready for harvest. And keeping chickens free from disease. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Bungoma in Western Kenya with Mary, Gilbert and Francis. There's still lots of work to do. I'm going to find out how to keep chickens healthy 
while Cardo learns how to get beans ready for harvest. Livestock farming can be complicated, but one basic thing can simplify it, hygiene. Mary has lost chickens to disease in the past, so she needs some advice to prevent this from happening again. I have videoed the chicken house and sent it to our expert Charles from Kenchik, who has now come prepared with recommendations for how to start again with a new flock and keep them healthy. But first, what challenges did she have last time? Charles. Yes, Tony. Meet our farmers, Mary and Francis. The main challenge we have in our poultry here is uh, diseases. Last time we lose almost all the clothes. All of it? Yes. In the morning you wake up, they appear very dull. Around noon they began to die. Oh. And they died at an alarming rate. Well, mm. That was a huge loss. A seriously big loss. So why should the farmer get new stock from you? Especially when it comes to chicks. You get chicks from Ken Chick? They are vaccinated against Marex, against Gumboro, against Newcastle to ensure that it is a healthy bird. The quality of chicks matters a lot. Okay. You get the low quality chicks, you lose a lot. What about the other diseases like avian influenza, full typhoid? Yeah, as Ken Chick, we ensure that as you receive your chicks, you also receive a vaccination program. That one will help to guide you on what you are supposed to do. Whatever we have not done, so you are supposed to do it. So you will pick at day 18 is where now you will start your first vaccinations. We also offer technical support. The Kenchik has the vets all over. Uh, we have the poultry centers all over so that you can just give a call. The vet will have to come and check if the chicks are okay. To start Mary and Francis chicken farming again, Charles has a surprise for them today. A hundred high-quality chicks from Ken Chick. That's so good. Yes? Kind, yeah. So what chicks have you brought for our farmers today? Uh, today I brought for Mary the improved Kenyaji called Kenbro from Ken Chick. It is a dual purpose breed, both for eggs and meat. If you're going in for meat, it will be ready between two and a half to three months. It will be ready for the market. For eggs, five to six months. Mm -hmm. It is when you start getting eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So brooder management, once a chick comes in. First thing I have to tell a farmer that when you are picking our chicks, they lack a mother. So you are the mother. Mother, mother hen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have to provide enough heat in the brooder before the chicks come in. Yeah, you have to ensure that the drinking water is clean. As always, then you, you get feeds from a reputable source, which has got all the nutritional values the chicks require. So that one will also help you to reduce the diseases in your house. So how old are the chicks when they are brought? They are old, because the chicks have, uh, they have been transported from far to your farm. So to rejuvenate them, you need to give multivitamin, which contains glucose, to energize. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So Charles. Yes, Tony. You, you saw a video we sent you? Yep. Which was the first thing you noticed? A biosecurity. Anything that will prevent bringing in diseases to your poultry environment. Aha. Uh -huh. yes. So they need to be protected. They need to be protected. Mm -hmm. The first step to protecting chickens from disease is to prevent bacteria coming in. Mary's chicken house has a built-in food bath that needs filling with a mixture of disinfectant so that anyone entering can clean their feet. So you have also to control the people coming in and out of the, the poultry. See, there was a poor cleanliness in the house. A lot of dirt on the walls, looking at the roof, and the floor also. Some bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pests will come in, the rodents will come in. So those are carriers of the diseases. So Charles, what do you recommend? So I would recommend that uh, we start cleaning from the top. When you are cleaning the, the poultry house, you start from the top sides, then you clean the floor. When you entered your chicken house, could you smell something? You're right, there's some, a certain smell that is very itchy to the nose. Eh? You need to remove the dirt so that there's no accumulation of ammonia gases. Also, the chicks can breathe good air. <laughs> yeah. If chicken droppings are not cleaned regularly, they will build up and release a gas called ammonia that makes it hard for chickens to breathe. 
regular cleaning prevents this. Then after there, you disinfect the house before you bring in the new flock. The chicken house has been cleaned following Charles's instructions. And we are now setting up a new brooder up in a corner of the chicken house. Next, ensure that any holes in the floor and the walls are sealed so that rodents cannot enter and bring diseases and infection with them. Welcome to the Shambashi Pop Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect very little to no rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makueni and Kajado, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. Lower parts of Garissa, however, will get up to 25 mm total rains. The coastal counties will get low to moderate rains, ranging up to 25 mm in the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. However, Tana River and Taita Taveta will see low total rains of less than 5 mm. Central Kenya counties will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. This includes Lake Kipia, Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Moranga, Kirinyaga, Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu. North, Central and South Rift Valley counties will have low to moderate rains ranging between 15 to 50 mm across the week. This cuts across Trukana, Samburu, West Pokot, Baringo, Wasingishu, Kericho, Bomet, Nakuru to Narok. The western Nyanza regions will get moderate levels of rains ranging between 15 to 50 mm in the week. This spans across the counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga, Tusiaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi and Miguri. For more tips and detailed weather forecast for your area, get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Hey there. Do you want more information on the topics being discussed on Shamba Shape Up? We are bringing you the Shamba Shape Up podcast where you can get farming information and tips anywhere, anytime. Join us as we discuss good farming practices and dig deeper. Now, where do you get this podcast? Easy. WhatsApp the word podcast to iShamba on 0748-153-120 to get a link to the podcast. You can also Google us, Shamba Shape Pop Podcast. Tundekazi. There are so many steps to getting your crops ready for harvest and management is key. Gilbert enjoys growing beans and his current crop will soon be ready to harvest. I've asked Millicent Barasa from Dubai Limited to find out what Gilbert needs to do to get the most from his crops. Beans are a source of proteins mm. and in this area beans do very well. Maybe just to ask what quantity do you get in Areca? Three bags per acre. Do you know that you can get up to 13 bags? I was not aware. It's possible. When you use the certified seed, mm -hmm. like this one we have here, the Mumbai seed, you are sure of germination. Mm -hmm. The other thing is production. Mm -hmm. So what you are looking at the end is the yield quantity. Under good management, you'll get up to one ton. How old is this crop? Two and a half months. Two and a half months. Yeah. So we are heading towards harvest. Yeah. What do you think is the main challenge you're having with your beans? The main challenge is disease. Mm -hmm that normally affects them. The crop is at flowering stage, though affected by the aphids. And then the bean virus is, has also attacked the crop at some point. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the virus can't be helped, but you can control the aphids to stop it spreading. Ask your local agro-dealer for the right product or call iShamba on 0711-082-606. Another thing maybe I can talk about is the weed management. Yes. And then at this stage the crop should be a bit greener. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, so maybe what you can say, nutrients, there's some deficiency. From this stage, Mili, what is the management of this crop? So at this stage, the crop is supposed to be supplemented by the fruits and flowering foliar mm -hmm. fertilizer. Mm -hmm. and then after it has podded is when you do the final weeding. Okay. So after the final weeding, you'll be awaiting the maturity, then you mm -hmm. do the harvesting.
Weeding will keep the whole crop healthy until it's time to harvest. And applying foliar spray will help the beans to pod. You're only supposed to harvest your crop when all the leaves have shed down. Mm -hmm. So the pods should be brown and all the leaves have shed. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to harvest on um, a dry yeah. day. Oh. So you pull the beans one by yeah. one, yeah. you shake, the soil has to remain in the field. Then after that, you go take it to a cool, dry place under a tree or those people who have sheds. Mm. Get a tandarua, put it down then, put your beans on it. Tandarua is like a tapulin. Yeah, actually tapulin. Yeah. yeah. What does it help with? So tapulin will help in, like the beans will not be able to get the moisture from the underground in case you have stored your beans outside. Also at the top, in case the rain comes, you just cover it up. Okay. Yeah, so beans really fear water. Mm -hmm. So any water drop, the beans will tend to germinate again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So from then, your crop will dry and then you have to turn every now and then so that there will be no decomposition mm -hmm. beneath. Yeah. Yeah. So they've harvested, uh, it's dried. Mm -hmm. How do they store? After drying, check the moisture content. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're supposed to store your beans when it's 12% moisture content. It will take you up to two years mm -hmm. without okay. getting bad. Mm -hmm. Did you know mm -hmm. that? No. <laughs> now you know. To check the moisture content of your beans or any grains, use this simple moisture meter found in most agrovets at an affordable price. This is important because too much moisture may cause the beans to rot and also to grow aflatoxin, which is bad for your health. To protect the beans from weevils and other pests, use hermetic bags which are airtight so no pests will survive inside the bag for lack of air. Putting the wooden base is very good during storage. It also prevents the rodents from attacking the beans and then it also helps in the moisture. Mm -hmm. The beans will not attract the moisture from beneath. And then the room should be well aerated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then the beans should not touch wall to wall, just to be within the center. Yeah. Why is that? The first thing helps in again the moisture. So to get the best out of your beans, Keep the moisture content low. Store them in hermetic bags. Wow! Chicken house is looking good. It has been thoroughly disinfected. The food bath now has disinfectant. So, goodbye to diseases. The new brooder looks amazing. Well done, Kamau and the team. It's time to meet the new chicks. Wow! <laughs> what a good house! Yeah? This is so nice! Look at that! Just look at that! Yeah, totally. There yeah, you yeah. are! There you are! Wow! Thank, thank, you, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Shall we help you? you? Right! Voila! Wow! Wow! wow. 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 Yeah, Very you. healthy! Oh, there wow. you go! Uh, these are good quality chicks, yes. and Kenchik is here to walk you the journey uh -huh. till the end. So, Mary and Gilbert's farm is shaped up. And they have the knowledge they need to make a success of farming in the future. Well, I learned a lot. It was interesting, actually. So I'm very much appreciative. And as a teacher, we've added you more knowledge, haven't you? Yes, yes, yes. Today with Shamba Shepa, I've gotten the skills I didn't know. The mistakes I've been making have been corrected. Mm -hmm. Where is the money? In the farm. In the farm. Good. Mm. Did you hear that, Francis? Yes. Where is the money? In the agriculture. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> good one. You okay, have... <laughs> our work here is done. done. So, bye! bye.